Rory had always been an animal lover, but he grew up with two very mean parents. His mother said she had allergies, but every time he asked her what the allergies were, they changed. If he wanted a cat, she was allergic to cats. If he wanted a fish, she was allergic to fishes. If he wanted to go to the zoo, she was allergic to crowds. Rory's dad didn't have any allergies, but he hated animals. However, he loved eating meat, so when Rory said he wanted a cat, his dad said, Mmm, cat. I haven't eaten cat before. We can get it nice and fat and then eat it. Then Rory cried and stopped asking for a pet. When Rory finished university, he moved to a small town so he could have lots of space. The town had lots of dog parks, and it also had a cat park. Cat parks weren't normal, so he was very excited to go there. Rory thought a lot about what pet to get. Every day he went to the dog park and the cat park. He talked to people and played with their animals. People told him that cats and dogs were hard to look after, but he didn't want to get a small pet. So one day he got a big dog called Buck. Buck was an Alaskan Malamute, a big gray dog with lots of energy. Rory had always loved these dogs because they were social and loved to play. Rory and Buck had a lot of fun. They went for walks twice a day, and they played lots of games. Buck never bit Rory, and he never peed on the floor. However, Buck had a lot of hair. Soon, the house was covered in hair. When Rory tried to clean it up, he sneezed a lot. Rory went to the doctor, who told him he was allergic to dog hair. Rory couldn't believe it. He was allergic, just like his mum. He thought maybe it would get better, but it just got worse. Soon, Rory was sneezing all day, and he couldn't play with Buck. So he decided to give Buck to a family on his street. They didn't have allergies, and they had lots of time to play with him. Rory cried all night after saying goodbye to Buck, but he didn't sneeze again after that. Next, he tried a cat. He made sure to get an allergy test first, and he wasn't allergic to cats. But he wanted to be safe, so he chose a sphinx cat, a type of cat that had no hair. He also knew that sphinx cats were very social and were a bit like dogs. He called his cat Aslan. They played together and went to the cat park, and he had no problems with allergies. Sometimes Aslan peed on the floor, but Rory taught him where to go, and this wasn't a problem. However, Aslan was a very social cat. When Rory was cooking, Aslan jumped up and tried to take the food. When Rory read, Aslan scratched the book, and sometimes he scratched the book so much that Rory couldn't read it. When Rory had a bath, Aslan jumped in the water and then got angry, because he didn't like water. If Rory didn't play with Aslan, then Aslan was mean to him. He scratched his legs and hissed. One day, Rory woke up and the bed was covered in dead birds. There were probably thirty of them. Aslan had killed all the birds and put them on the bed as a present to Rory. Enough, said Rory. He found a sad old woman who lived alone and gave Aslan to her. She loved the cat, and when Aslan scratched her, she just said, Oh, be careful, my dear. Finally, Rory decided he wasn't ready for a big pet. So he decided to get guinea pigs. Guinea pigs were very pretty, and they were easy to look after. Some of his friends at school had guinea pigs, and he always wanted to play with them, but his mom said he couldn't because she was allergic. He got two guinea pigs because they were very social animals. One was black, so he called her Black Beauty, and the other was pink like a pig, so he called her Babe. Black Beauty and Babe were sisters, so he thought they would be friends. But Babe was a very mean guinea pig. Babe was worse than both Buck and Aslan. When Rory gave the guinea pigs food, Babe ate all the food before Black Beauty could get to it. If he tried to give food to Black Beauty, Babe squeaked and bit him. If Rory played with Black Beauty, Babe started eating their little wooden house. And when Rory played with Babe, she always peed on him. It was like she waited until he was holding her to pee. But they were easier to look after than Buck and Aslan. If he wore gloves when he was near them, then it didn't hurt when Babe scratched and bit him. And he did really love Black Beauty. One day Babe will die, he said to Black Beauty, and then I'll get you a real sister. That day did not come. One morning Rory put on his gloves to feed the guinea pigs. He didn't know how she had done it because they slept in their little wooden house, which was locked. But Rory had stopped trying to understand Babe. He washed the gloves and then went to see them. 
The little wooden house was red. Rory couldn't understand. It looked like... Paint? Then he saw it. Babe's mouth was red, covered in blood. Next to her was Black Beauty's body. But it wasn't all there. Babe had eaten most of it. There was blood everywhere. The door of their house was covered in blood. Their food bowl was full of blood. Rory felt sick. The door to their house was open. Babe had unlocked it. How could a guinea pig break a lock? But that wasn't the worst part. Babe could have run away. She could have run into the woods, but she chose to stay here. She wanted Rory to see this. She wanted him to see what she could do. She wanted him to be afraid of her. Rory took a deep breath and went to get his phone. He called the police. Five years later, Rory loved his job, and he knew he was good at it. His little shop won a prize almost every year. If you looked at the shop, you would think it was just a normal butcher's. Rory the butcher said the sign. Next to the sign was a happy picture of Rory holding a big knife. Under the knife, there was a pig who did not look so happy. But this was no normal small-town butcher's. If you stayed in town long enough, you might hear the stories. Rory was wonderful with animals, they said. If you visited once or twice, you might think that he was an animal lover. People brought their pets into the shop and talked to him about them. But it was always pets with problems. People brought in angry dogs and mean cats. Rory never went near the animals, and he always held his big knife. When Rory knew a customer well, he waited until they were alone in the shop. Then he said... I'm selling a new kind of meat, you know. Just come with me into the other room. Oh, and bring your pet. Strange things happened in that small town. Mr. and Mrs. Foster had a dog that peed in their beds. The children loved the dog, but the parents hated it. Then, one day, while the children were at school, the dog ran away. Nobody could find it. The children cried and cried. Don't worry, children, said Mrs. Foster. I'm sure we'll see Spot again soon. I went to the butcher's today and got some lovely steaks for us all. That will make you feel better. Sometimes Rory's mother rang him and asked how the business was going. 